welcome to the Hope Babette Tang Histology Corps here at the Koch Institute for Integrative Cancer Research. It's the most fun lab you have never heard of. We are an integral part of the research here at MIT and at the Koch Institute. Um, and I know you're asking yourself, what is a histology lab? It's kind of, you know, unknown. We really, um, while we do play a big part in the clinical um, realm and diagnosing disease states and cancer, we here focus on cancer research. Um, a histologist is a person who makes slides for a pathologist to diagnose what disease condition or what type of cancer you have. We make those little microscope slides which they do review. Um, pathologists are doctors who are specialists in microanatomy. They are looking at patterns of cells and what these cells are actively doing. Um, it is a subspecialty and it is actually super fascinating. So why don't you come to the lab and we can show you some of what we do. We basically get representative sections of the tissue samples that the um, researchers and or clinicians are submitting to us. They don't give us the entire tissue. Imagine getting a whole human-sized liver kidney. It's just not going to work. We do standardized um, tissue sizes and standardized tissue cassettes. And I'm going to put on my safety glasses and show you some of these samples. These samples are, the representative sample is taken and it is um, submitted in these tissue cassettes which are here underneath our hood. And let's see. And we have this. Can you put it on? All right, yes. Super fun. All right. Check it out, man. Look at it, mouse lungs. They're pink. Look how fluorescent pink they are. What do you guys think that is? That is a fluorescent dye that the researcher has in, in, injected into the animal so they can visualize their tumors in the lungs much more easily. You can see the bright pink, right? Super cool. Um, these are actually in ethanol now, but they are fixed. What we do is suck all the water out, infiltrate it with paraffin. I'll show you that machine in a second. I'm going to show you another type of tissue. Ah, mouse colon. Is that awesome? It's large intestine. You can see it's all cleaned out, it's rolled up. That's not how it is in your body or the mouse's body, but this is what some of the tissue sizes that we get. You can see it's in a sample size. These are all the sample sizes. This is what, this is what we have to work with. You can't have too much larger. Once it goes from here, we bring it over to our tissue processor, which is where we're sucking out all the, the um, water using these graded strengths of alcohol to soften it up with some xylene. And then we infiltrate it with paraffin. Just like you go into the uh, ladies salon, spa, and dipping your hands in paraffin, we have four paraffin baths here. Once it gets infiltrated with the paraffin, it goes to our embedding center. Um, I'm going to transition over there. I'm going to change my gloves real quick. So here we are at the embedding center. Um, we turn off some of the lights so there's no reflection type of glare type of stuff. But here are the embedding bases. We size the tissue to the um, size of the mold. Here are some of our tissue cassettes already processed the paraffin. We remove the lid. And look, sweet, some more mouse lungs. I need a bigger embedding mold. I'll use one of the larger ones. This is dispensing paraffin down here, the hot liquid paraffin. We take the samples out, arrange them in the manner of which they need to be. This is a stylized cassette, so we need to embed them in a very specific manner. Four mouse lung lobes. Whoops, he bounces around. This is hot, 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 cold, and cold. And then we go like this. And then a little bit like that. Whoops, they bounce around. Put the top on so we know what it is and who it belongs to. Dispense more paraffin. Put it right here. Let's do that again. Here is the tissue cassette. Take the lid off, throw it away, get a nice size embedding mold. Take my nice hot forceps again, put the lungs down. This researcher wants the widest cross section of the tissue possible with the greatest tissue surface area. I checked their requisition before I did this. Put them down flat lid on over here. Whoops, a little bit extra. 
All right, that's how it goes here. We're gonna transition to Charlene's bench where she's gonna show us how to section mouse locks. All right, Charlene is here at our microtome. She is going to face a block for us. We face blocks to remove the extra paraffin that is in front of the tissue. I'm gonna lean over her shoulder. This COVID times, this is dangerous, but we're gonna do it in the name of science. Every rotation of the wheel is about 10 or 15 microns, whatever she set the facing setting to. It is actually set at 20, I just took a quick look. Um, you see how fast we can go at this stage. We're just shaving away the paraffin to reveal the full face of the tissue. Because these researchers, like everybody, want a full face a full cross section of the tissue so they can see what's going on. Um, once you get to the area where she's comfortable and confident that all that extra paraffin is removed, she's going to soak it on icy water and then she's going to get really thin sections. Um, what the pathologists are looking for in our researchers are the patterns of the cells. Um, like a paisley shirt or a um, oriental rug, they have a very specific pattern. Think perhaps what's the function of the tissue. Like the kidney, has a cell pattern very similar, you'd be shocked. And um, so your filter for your um, furnace at home or your car has a regular routine folded pattern. When those patterns are disrupted, it can be a cancer or a disease condition. This is what the pathologists and researchers are looking for. Our researchers are injecting nanoparticles and in, in implanting um, drug delivery devices and things of that nature. They're looking to see what kind of reactions are happening and if their drugs have gotten to the tumor and if the nanoparticles have hit the area of the um, tissue that they needed it to. Charlene has just fitted the fully soaked block into the microtome. I'm gonna get a little bit of a close-up. So you can see they are mouse lungs. She's bringing the block right up to the knife edge. This is set at five microns. It's thinner than the human hair. It's really thin. You can pull one of your own out and see how thin it is. This is how thin this tissue is when we get it on that knife edge. She's going to pick it up and move it to the water back. Alright, this is just warm distilled water. She's going to choose the one that looks the best wrinkle free section and if she can slope the normal lungs over to the tumor lungs you can see even on the water back which ones have tumors and which ones do not. See the ones that are a little bit whiter have the kind of more dense areas, those are the tumors. The one that's fully flat and a little bit less gray um, are the ones that are normal. Okay, at this point she's going to pick up the sections onto a glass slide. The ones that look the best, there's a little bit of glare, I'll move. Hmm. You see how gently she manipulates that tissue, pulls out a couple little wrinkles, and picks it up on that slide. Boom. There it is. All right, at this point, we are going to go bake these slides in a slide oven to remove the water from in between the section and the paraffin. All right, here we go. So um, we bake our slides in the slide oven. It's a rotating oven. We bake for about 30 minutes at 70 degrees. Um, different places will bake for different lengths of time and heat, but that's average. Then we put them in a slide rack and put them on an automated stainer. You don't have to hand stain nowadays, which is wonderful. Um, here's our slide stainer. Automatically stains it with hematoxin eosin. Load the door, close it, tell it, you, tell it what program you want. Run it hematoxin eosin, which is the most common stain out there. It's been around for about 100 years or so. Hematoxin stains the nuclei, eosin the cytoplasm of the cell, so they look pink and purple. Um, you can tell a lot from an H&E &E stain. There are a variety of other stains and um, things we can tag the cells with so you can tell the disease conditions and what cells are populating your tumor. This is how they're deciding what type of cancer you have, if it's positive or this or negative or that. Um, typically, we would go underneath a microscope and take a look at these. We do a lot of evaluation, make sure everything looks good. Because I'll just the ones who are really diagnosing. Since you really can't see easily in this microscope, we're gonna go to our big machine where we scan slides, digital scans, it's super fun. And I'll show you some lung, lungs, normal lungs, and lung tumors. Here's my machine. So here are some lungs. So these are normal lungs. You can see they are open and lacy. See, this is what you're breathing. You want it to, it looks kind of like a kitchen sponge, right? 
Um, the here's your bronchus, your bronchioles, I should say, larger area, airways. Here's a little bit of blood pooling. Um, but basically, this is your normal lung. You know, this looks good, right? And then you go and look. So this guy, oops, sorry. It is this guy. Ooh, where do you think the tumors are, right? So this is spleen. This was just put in as an accessory tissue. But look at these really congested areas. And then look at these solid areas. Should your lungs have solid areas? No. Ooh, it's a little too close up. Let's go to this. See, here's normal. Here's tumor. Look how angry and aggressive it looks. It's like, ah, it's getting there. It's getting you. Um, again, open and lacy. Here's the tumor. Really congested, solid. This is what a lung tumor looks like. Um, kind of scary stuff. Um, our researchers are trying on and off genes. They're trying to figure out what causes the um, tumors to grow and then grow quickly and what causes them to slow down. Once they figure that out, they can help figure out how to slow down or stop your tumor from growing and make it go away. This is what's really fun about our job. It's very visual, it's very hands-on, and our researchers are wonderful. I really do hope that you guys learn a little bit, have learned a little bit about histology and um, that you'll come visit, visit us sometime. It's really a great place to work, MIT and the Koch Institute, and it's super fun. It, please, come on down. Thank you for your time. We'll see you.